The gospel comes to us today from St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. He replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You've no doubt heard the expression, there's no such thing as a free meal. And I believe it. I think the exception, though, is the grace that we receive from God. The meal, you might say, that we receive from God in Jesus Christ. His love, his compassion, and renewing, fulfilling, life-generating gift that we receive from God's grace in Jesus Christ. Clearly shown in the miracle that we have that is revealed to us, told to us in the gospel today. The miracle we, t we call the feeding of the 5,000. An important miracle because it's attested to by all four gospels that alerts us to the fact that this is a prevalent, significant event in the life of Christ. Matthew, the gospel of Matthew brings clarity to the fact that this is God's grace shown to us with no strings attached. And he does that by comparison. He brings into close proximity another meal that is hosted by King Herod on his birthday. So it's a tale of two meals, one Herod's and one Jesus. Herod's meal is full of strings attached. Regardless of the generosity, the abundance, uh, the gift, the luxury, the richness, the fun, the celebration. Still, there were strings attached to almost all of it. Invitations were earned. They were not given out freely, but exclusive list of political allies, supporters, advisors, um, appointees, all submissive and fearful of Herod, all obedient and compliant, ready to do his will and to seek his favor. Exclusive and elite. And along with that, those guests were his family, a family that was made up on um, grounds that John the Baptist had questioned because Herod had taken his brother's wife as his own, and they had a daughter, Salome. And so, it, out of greed and lust, this family was, oh, was created, you might say, and contested by John the Baptist. And that plays in here. So when Salome dances for Herod on his birthday, he then says that he would give her whatever she asks, up to half of his kingdom, which seems more than generous, doesn't it? Seems very abundant. And yet, uh, it was tied to the fact that she had 
somehow merited this, uh, earned this, uh, at least earned Herod's favor, and pleased him by this dance. And her mother, Herodias, then, when Herod promised to give her anything she asked for, said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. So it was something that she sought out of revenge and hate and spite, and it was full of evil. And even though it was an abundant uh, uh, offer by Herod for up to half the kingdom, it was still limited to that. So strings attached here, limitations there, manipulation all over the place, Herodias, via her daughter Salome, manipulated, painted Herod into a corner and asked for the head of John the Baptist. It all ends up in death. The last string that's attached to a lot of things is death. But Jesus' meal has no strings attached. His guest list is inclusive. Not only men, numbering 5,000, but also the women and the children named and told that they too were included. Everyone who wanted to be there, whether they were poor, peasant, plain, all of them were welcome. There was no solicitation, no pressure. Even though the disciples are anxious, and see what's going on and feel the pressure of we need to do something and at least send them away so they can go get some food because this is a deserted place. There's no food and we have nothing and they are hungry. But Jesus has this idea that, oh, we can help. We can do something. It's out of compassion. The same compassion that he felt when he stepped out of the boat and he saw the crowd and he had compassion for them. Love that cares for others. The people didn't even ask. But Jesus saw their need. The disciples saw their need. And what Jesus gave was not limited in any way. It was not just a fair portion of what was available or a minimum amount. It was an overabundance. Everybody was fed, and they ate, and they were filled. And the word that's used here is not just, oh, that's good, thanks, that's enough. No, it's that sit down to Thanksgiving meal, loosen up your waistline, your belt, or unbutton your button, and eat until your stomach is exploding. I couldn't eat anymore. They were stuffed. That's what that word means. And everybody, all of the 5,000 men and the women and the children, and then they took up what was left over, and there were 12 bushel baskets full. They had more leftovers than what they started with, as opposed to Herod, who I'm sure put out a, a lot of money consumed a lot of food, and had probably less resources than what he started with. And Jesus' motivation for doing this? To serve. To serve. To enrich and to renew the life of these people who were in need. To infuse God's love and God's spirit into people's life, not to try to influence or control. And everything was done freely and in a spirit of gratitude. Jesus asked for nothing in return, promising and bestowing the total of God's kingdom in this gift. Gratitude, taking what was offered, a meager amount. Yes, almost saying thanks for nothing here, but it was a little something. 
And he gave thanks. And he blessed it. He broke it so that it could be distributed and shared. It's a free meal. No strings attached. And it's a free meal for you. Jesus Christ is given for us. If you're hungry to know God's love, then come and eat, for Jesus is the bread of life. If you're thirsty to taste God's forgiveness and to be renewed in love, then come and drink the water of new life. If your life is empty of promise and hope, then come and hear the favor bestowed on you in Jesus Christ, the gift that is present for you now and forever as a child of God. If your life seems lacking, come and be filled. Know the abundance of the unlimited resources of God's kingdom of grace and compassion. And if you're longing for greater peace and justice, then come, be renewed, be refreshed, be strengthened, and be sent. God will take what we offer, what meager gifts, skills, abilities, intentions, dreams, God will take those meager offerings or out of nothing and bless it and give thanks and break it so that it may be distributed and multiplied over and over again. No strings, no bills, no expectations, no quid pro quo, no IOUs, no promissory notes, no favors, absolutely no strings attached. God comes right out front and declares, not painted in a corner, not manipulated, not pressured into it, but God comes right out in Jesus Christ to act on our behalf and our lives. What are you going to do? The invitation is to join the meal. Or are you going to go looking for something you think might be better? Are you going to live in the kingdom of God as it comes to us in Jesus Christ, shown to us in Christ? gifted to us in Christ? Or will we continue in our compliance, our submission to a realm that is greedy and full of hatred, manipulation, and in the end, pulling the last string of death? Jesus is the free meal that makes you free. And Jesus says, there's a place for you. Amen.